45 ounces of bread. Nearly three pounds, that was. That's the amount of bread everyone in Britain eats on the average each week. Baking bread is one of the oldest of human chores, for bread itself is as old as history. Men have fought and rioted over it through the ages. Women have made bread since primitive times, but nowadays this sight is a rarity. For baking today is a man's job. It's long, heavy work, and there's hardly a woman among Britain's 30,000 bakers. But although she now very seldom bakes, the average woman plays a decisive part in the bakery business, for she's the customer, and she dictates the sort of loaf she wants. It's her choice that decides the mechanical production lines of the vast modern bakeries, where bread is made to its ageless formula, but on a vast scale. The flour is first sifted mechanically, the yeast and the salt are added, and then comes the water and the baking fat, and the big dough mixer gets busy. It handles about 500 weights of dough at a time, a huge mechanical housewife that's kneading enough for 200 or more loaves at one go. After a couple of hours in the bowls, the dough starts off on the big parade to the oven. Every stage scientifically controlled. It's cut down to size, weighed while it's on the move and shaped by machine. By now, it begins to look like the real thing. The bread moves on into a warm air proving machine. This helps the yeast to work and the dough to rise. All this takes time. From the start to the oven, maybe five hours, according to the size and type of loaf. On they go, precisely controlled and dead on time. Part of a daily bake of nearly 100,000 loaves in one ultra-modern automated bakery. The facts about bread are simple. They start in the wheat fields and move on to the flour mills. Britain imports four million tons of grain a year, half of it from Canada, at a basic cost of about 100 million pounds. Once it reaches the ports, it's drawn up into the silos of the big mills and is later ground into flour or into feeding stuff. Flour milling, like bread making, is as old as Adam. But today, automatic rollers take the place of the millstones of old. And the modern miller has to be something of a scientist, forever testing the standards of his product. He makes three types of flour, white, brown, and wholemeal. And from them, we in Britain eat the equivalent of 10 million large loaves a day, summer and winter. Yes, 10 million loaves, coming usually in three sizes. The standard loaf weighing a pound and three quarters, the small loaf weighing 14 ounces, and the 10 ounce fancy loaf. While most of it is sold through the shops, quite a lot of bread is still delivered to the door. These baker's roundsmen each make 350 house calls a day. There are 22 of them, all working for one bakery that also supplies 20 of its own shops. With getting on for 20 million housewives to please, the baker is always looking for something new. And some bakeries now concentrate on making fancy loaves. In the search for novelty, Britain also bakes many foreign type loaves. And it's a fact that you can buy more than 100 varieties of bread within a mile radius of London's Piccadilly Circus. This bakery in North London specializes in rolls for the West End hotels and restaurants. It estimates their cost to a fraction of a farthing. Like most of the larger modern units, it bakes around the clock, producing 65,000 rolls a night and delivering them in central London in the early morning. This is a trade dominated by the multiple bakers. Four major groups lead the industry and seem to divide it up between them. 
but the little man still has his place in it. There aren't as many small master bakers as there used to be, but there are usually one or two in most towns. Their regular customers like what they regard as a homemade loaf. Men like these are real craftsmen. They're an important section of the 30,000 people who bake our daily bread. It's hard work, sometimes it's heavy work. It can mean long hours at night, and costs are high and profits slim. But the job's satisfying in itself. The right man can get a good living out of it. The method of baking has hardly changed with the years. Yes, that's how it's done. As wages go up, people tend to eat less bread. Man for man, they eat less of it in the United States than we do. And in France, the amount has been halved this century. Tell this to the small independent baker, and he doesn't worry very much. He has his regulars. They remain faithful. His greatest headache is to find the men who'll follow on after him. The Baking Industries Research Establishment is at Chorley Wood, just outside London. This is where scientists help the trade to solve its problems. A few years ago, they found a way of speeding up bread making, now known as the Chorley Wood process, which is being adopted by bakeries in Britain and overseas. Here, they inoculate bread with mold spores as part of an investigation into why bread doesn't keep fresh longer. They're trying to solve the age-old problem of preventing bread going stale. If they could solve that one, they would save the bakeries and the housewives millions of pounds of waste a year. Staleness is the baker's headache. Bread has to be fresh. It has to be baked, cooled, distributed and sold all in a day. This insistence on freshness explains the amazing popularity of the sliced rat loaf. More than half the bread sold in Britain today is sliced. This is the housewife's choice, yet it's only since the war that it's really become popular. Nowadays, when a woman goes shopping, she isn't looking to give herself extra work. She wants to cut down kitchen time, not add to it. So she buys the bread that saves all the cutting up when she's hurrying to get a meal for the family. It's just one of the hundreds of ways in which the preparation of food at home is being speeded up. Out of that rat loaf has grown a vast industry, right on target for today. But with its origins in what is possibly the oldest of all the crafts known to man, baking. <laughs>